Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing an unhaul. I think this is my first unhaul of the year actually, which is kind of exciting. I just have a bunch of books that I need to get rid of purely, mostly for space reasons. Like a lot of these, as we'll go through them, discuss, like I honestly probably would keep if I had more space, but I am just at that point right now with my book collecting where it's basically like one book comes in and one book goes out. Like I just do not have the room anymore to keep books and like an aesthetic way like obviously you know I could just stack books behind books and stuff like that but I don't want to do that and I don't know I just don't have the room to like store them the way that I would want to store them and I just I like having things so neat and tidy like I'm a very organized like person and yeah that just wouldn't work for my brain having books just like in random stacks and piles but anyway we're gonna go through each book individually. I hope you enjoy. If you do like this video, please leave a like and please subscribe if you're not already. Definitely leave your thoughts and comments on any of the books we discussed today and let's get started. So first I'm gonna talk about these random kids books that I found somehow in my bookshelves. So I have this Doctor Who book. I don't know where this would have came from. It was only $1.99 whenever I bought it and for a fact it never got read. So this can go. I don't even have anything else to say about it. Same for this like Roald Dahl like World Book Day book. This has probably been in my bookshelf since like maybe 2005. It does not need to stay any longer. And this is <laughs> volume three of some manga. I read this in 2010. I actually remember liking it but also literally it's volume three so it's no use to me. Like even if I did want to reread it I wouldn't jump into volume three of this random manga that I don't remember what it was about. I think it was about like this um, like, online VR gaming type reality world. I don't know. Anyway, these books I have nothing else to say about them. I just like, they don't need to stay here anymore. And then next I'm going to go and move on to someone who used to be a favourite author of mine and that's Ursula Kelly Gwynn. So I have these two Ursula Kelly Gwynn books and this is book five in the Earthsea series and I have a really nice bind up of books one to four and although I never really enjoyed it and it was I think mostly like three stars, two or three star for me. I am still going to keep that purely because it's a really nice edition, it's really pretty, it fits in with my other books, stuff like that and you know, above all else I am a lover of aesthetics but yeah this one is like a hardcover, it's so much taller than the rest obviously as well, That's, the other ones are like a normal, or the other one sorry because it's one book, it's like normal size so basically this just doesn't fit. And I didn't even like it anyway, and I'm never actually going to reread the series. Like, I bet in a couple of years' time, I probably will end up unhauling another one. It's just something I don't want to do right now because, you know, it is a really nice book. But yeah, this just does not need to stay. And then this one is a book of short stories that I picked up, and I got this at a charity shop, so it didn't cost me much. It was like a couple pounds, if even that, like maybe a pound. And I just completely lost motivation to read Ursula Kelly Gwynn, to be honest, because. I, you know, absolutely loved the first two books of hers that I read and everything else about after that was like two or three stars. So this is short stories which I struggle with and anyway, like I'm not a short story reader to be honest. So I was like, I kept trying to pick up, like I put it on quite a few TBRs and it's not even that long, it's like less than 200 pages but I just know that realistically I'm not going to read this. So it can leave. Next we have some semi-recent reads that are all kind of like YA slash middle grade. So I have these two Avril Lavigne manga books which my friend gave me because she knew that I love Avril Lavigne and she was unhauling them. And they were really fun actually. I actually really like the art um, style and stuff. It's all full colour which I love. But realistically, never going to read these again. Um, I'm sure someone else might like them. I don't know. Now I'm like sitting here I'm like, do I want to unhaul this? Because I do love Avril Lavigne, but then I also know like I'm never gonna read them again probably, but maybe I will. Okay, these are now a maybe. <laughs> now I'm talking about them, these are a maybe. I might keep these. So let's move on. Um, Next one was Story of Tracy Beaker. I picked this again out of a charity shop and I loved it. I read it like basically one sitting and it is just like, well, watch my January wrap up, but it's like a UK like children's classic at this point. But if I ever want to read this again, I can go into literally any charity shop in the UK and there's probably a copy of it. I got it for like 20 pence. I don't really need to keep it because, you know, I just reread it. It was like fun and I loved rereading it, but like, I don't need to keep that. I don't need to keep this random children's book. Um, next we have Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is a middle grade that I read for my video reading Michelle from Thorwitz and Other Letters, favorite books. And this is a Native American inspired mythological, like Native American mythological inspired story. 
and it is middle grade, which I'm not really a middle grade reader, but I actually did really enjoy this. I thought it was quite fun. But again, I'm just never going to read it again. And I think, you know, someone else would probably love this. Someone that's like more in that age range as well. So it will be going to the charity shop and hopefully someone gets it. And then we have Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi. And this was okay. Like, I finished this and I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I will read the rest of the series. And I was like thinking about it and then I've like kept my eye out for like any of the books and charity shops and stuff but I've never really seen any and I'm not going to pay full price for them I know that for a fact I did not enjoy it enough to do that so maybe I'll get them at the library but either way even if I do read the future books in the series I don't need to keep this one um I got a second hand I'm pretty sure this was one that I got off of Emma novella a long time ago back in like when we done a little book thing but yeah, I don't need to keep this. It's also such a weird size. Like, I'm such a like <laughs> aesthetic person, as I keep saying. And like I just love all books that are like this height. So see when a random paperback is like this tall. Nah, I'm sorry, you can't stay. You've been evicted from the Big Brother house. Like, I'm sorry, like I just cannot deal with that. It actually really annoys me. Next we have other two which I did enjoy, but again, just not gonna reread. So we have Song of Solomon by Tony Morrison. I recently read Beloved by Toni Morrison and did not enjoy it, but back when I read this, which was a 2020 maybe, I thought it was really good. I can't actually really remember what it was about now. Um, I know it was about like African-American characters like growing up. Um, oh, his name is like Milkman. I don't know. It was like about this African-American man's life um, in like the 30s maybe. I enjoyed it at the time, can't really remember what it's about and I know for a fact I'm just, again, never going to reread so I'm like, I don't need to keep these books I'm not going to reread unless, obviously you guys, well not obviously, but some of you have probably seen like my Penguin Classics video or like my Penguin Modern Classics, like those like collections, even if I don't plan to reread it, re -read it I'm going to keep it anyway because it's like part of like my collection, but like these I'm not going to keep. The only other book I have in this like Picador, um, kind of spine is American Psycho and there's a really nice new edition of American Psycho that I'm actually tempted to pick up at some point or actually Andrew owns it but <laughs> I hinted for him to give it to me but he didn't want to yet so I'll work on it um, and then I have one that I only literally as I was preparing this video picked up because this was not when I planned on unhauling until I seen it on my shelf when I went to get um what was it Song of Solomon this was next to it and I fought it I looked at it and was like I'm not gonna read this again like obviously I went through my big Bronte phase. This is the Infernal World of Bronwell Bronte by Daphne de Maurier and you know I love the Brontes and I love Daphne de Maurier but this book was just like average. Um, It was like non-fiction but also quite fictional and I don't know if now that I've read a lot of de Maurier's like actual fiction I'd maybe appreciate this more but I just felt like it was too fictional like I just knew like she would talk about like whole conversations that like Branwell Bronte had with his dad and like private rooms and I was like this is made up, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just didn't really like how she portrayed Branwell either, if I remember correctly. I think it was like 2020 20, I read this, so it was a while ago now. But yeah, it's not even a nice edition anyway. It's like this weird. I don't have any other books that are orange. Ugh, this is an ugly cover. I don't know. Like, again, it's one of those ones where I bought this cheap secondhand anyway. If I want to ever read it again, I can do that again. But like, it's just taking up space that it's just I'm not going to happen. I just know for a fact it's not going to happen. Next we have the Fifty Shades series, so I've already gave Andrew Fifty Shades of Grey which he was all like hyped to read and then he never started it and now I don't think he's going to bother but um, I still have book two and three here, Fifty Shades Darker and Fifty Shades Freed. I actually really love these and I was going to keep them but these editions that I bought are disgusting. I bought them like second hand from a charity shop and like there's foot, like the pages are just gross. There's like food spillages and stuff, like the stains inside the book itself. Like the cover is literally like bent like this. Like I, <laughs> I don't need to keep these in this condition. Like if I really want to read Fifty Shades in the future, I will definitely like buy nice new editions because I think once I have a lot more space, this is like such a nice series. Like I just love like the aesthetic of spines that all match like next to each other. So that's why like, I'd want to keep these because I just like having like a series that's so consistent and like so um like matching. But like these ones are just gross. Like they actually are. Like, when I thought about it, I was like, there's literally food stains. Like I actually would like pick stains out of this book sometimes. I don't need to keep it. Like it honestly looks like someone was eating like curry sauce or something while they were reading. So they can go. They can go back to the charity shop. I also again literally got these for like 20 pence each. They don't need to stay. 
Uh, next one I'm going to fire through quickly because these are ones that I am going to unhaul once I've read them. I like to pre-plan my unhauls. So I have Grey by E.L. James, which is Fifty Shades in Christian's perspective. And again, exact same thing. Like, it's kind of gross. This one isn't as bad, but like, if I want to read these in the future after I've read this for the first time, I can get them secondhand again. No, I can get like nice new ones. I don't see myself keeping these ones anyway. I'd probably keep the original tr trilogy, but I don't think I was ever going to actually keep like this one in the two future books in a book what, series, which I don't even own. Um, next we have Gone by Michael Grant. This is like a YA, I think dystopian? It's like a YA thriller maybe. This is Olivia Catastrophe, one of her favourite books, and I've been saying like for years I'm going to read it. And I do plan to get to it eventually. <sighs> eventually. Hopefully soon. I don't even know what it's about. Um, everyone over the age of 15 disappears. Okay, that's what it's about. I'll read it eventually. I love you, I promise. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Haven't read this yet, really want to. I think I'll like it, but again, it's the same situation as um, one of the other ones where, or what's it called? It's called Shatter Me. It's just like a different height from every other book in my collection, so it's not staying. Which I know is such a petty reason to get rid of a book, but it's my collection, so I can do what I want. Um, next we have one that is the exact same, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos... I've never actually heard this person's name said out loud. Well, I probably have, but I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyway, um, The Shadow of the Wind is a lot of people's favourite book, and it's one that I think I will like as well. However, it's just not the right height <laughs> for my collection. Like, this one's even taller than that one. So it's not a stain. I'm so sorry. I know that's petty, but it's not. I do want to read it though, like, that is one I really do want to get to. So for Aristotle and Dante, like, I should probably get to these soon. Like, I should probably read these in March so then I can unhaul them straight away. That should be a plan. Will that happen? We'll figure out. We'll find out at the end of March. And then finally, one that I'm reading right now, I finally started last night, and it's The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. He's a Scottish author, and this is like a kind of like horror thriller. And I actually have only read chapter one before I went to bed last night. Really enjoyed it. But this is like a really old beat up edition that, again, I just picked up in a charity shop and it's pretty gross and, you know, I just don't want to keep it, to be honest. I might just give this to my dad though because I'm, I feel like he's probably read it before. He owns a lot of Ian Banks sci-fi books, so I'm assuming he's probably read this before. But yeah, this might just unhaul to my dad's bookshelf. <laughs> but yeah, that's all the books that I'm going to unhaul. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hearts and thoughts. If any of these books are your favourites, let me know. I feel like I've made a pretty solid case when I'm hauling them though, it's mostly, ugh, that's such a, I just, like, when I'm thinking about it, like, it's mostly for aesthetic reasons, like, I just don't want to keep dirty old books or books that don't fit anywhere else and, like, don't match anything and stuff like that, so, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.